Now it goes without question that Resident Evil 8 is one of the most highly anticipated games from Capcom that fans are expecting within the Resident Evil community. Given the overall success and progression we've seen with the Resident Evil 2 remake, many fans within the Resident Evil community are highly voicing their concerns and extremely excited on what Capcom has planned going forward within the Resident Evil 8 franchise, and with many people having to speculate that indeed, Resident Evil 8 is going to follow the exact formula of Resident Evil 7 and further having to carry over the story by reintroducing concepts such as the mold and many other creatures and entities within the game, the million dollar question is what exactly can we expect from Resident Evil 8 and is it possible for Resident Evil 8 in becoming one of the absolute best Resident Evil games within the franchise itself? Now, a lot of people within the Resident Evil community seem to be torn between two different ideas, with the first idea having to introduce a brand new set of characters unrelated to anybody we've seen before in Resident Evil, such as Barry Burton, Chris Redfield, Leon S. Kennedy, and characters of that nature. While on the other side, long-term fans would like to see the return of Leon, Chris, and said characters be introduced in the game, but how pragmatic would it be if the Resident Evil franchise itself is always codependent on older characters such as Leon and Chris? Many fans would argue that perhaps introducing and developing new characters down the pipeline Line, would it only be beneficial towards the Resident Evil product in us having to be introduced to new characters, new stories, and new ideas behind their journey, just as we've seen be done with Resident Evil 7. However, there were many fans that seemed to have been torn between the concept of the overall atmosphere introduced in Resident Evil 7, and as of right now, there are rumors circulating that Resident Evil 8 is supposed to take place on an abandoned island, where lots of different experiments were rumored to go down, which also introduces the origin of the mold creatures we've seen in Resident Evil 7, among many other things. Which really doesn't come as a surprise, as back in April of 2017, one of the Resident Evil executive producers went on record to state, and I quote, We want Resident Evil 7 to be the start of a new kind of survival horror and a new series. We already are thinking of various plans for the next game, but we also want to see how much we can continue to evolve survival horror itself. In the next few years, technology will continue to advance, i.e. PSVR, and what players want may also change but we will always strive to create horror experiences where the characters overcome a difficult situation. As of course it continues, and so the current masterpiece is just the beginning. Plans for the next title are already in motion and, when you see that game, you may find that it is very different from Resident Evil 7 in some ways while still retaining that core survival concept of people overcoming the odds. Resident Evil will always retain that essence. Now this actually puts a lot of things into question, as number one, we understand that Capcom is trying to follow the blueprints of what was of Resident Evil 7 in mainly keeping that survival horror aspect intact, which is a very good thing. However, when it ultimately trickles down to the atmosphere and the setting of what Resident Evil may in fact be, to that we have no idea as to what direction they're planning on going in, either A, connecting the Resident Evil 7 7 story together with Resident Evil 8, or B, introducing a brand new story with brand new characters that have absolutely no direct tie-ins with the Resident Evil 7 characters and story. But even then, this directly contradicts the overall narrative of Resident Evil 7, especially seeing the fact that we were introduced to a new concept that we haven't really seen be done in Resident Evil before, and even though the mold creatures aren't necessarily something new, their origin in fact is. But even then, Resident Evil 8 8 is promising to immerse the player in a brand new survival horror experience versus what we've gotten with other games that involved mainly action before. If you take Resident Evil 2's remake as an example, the Resident Evil 2 remake was one of the absolute prime examples of why survival horror and the elements of survival horror work with Resident Evil and Resident Evil only. You can look at other games and compare the action elements and compare the suspense elements, but Resident Evil will always be Resident Evil at its finest when
when incorporating the core element of survival horror in the game. So that is a green check mark when looking at the overall status of what Resident Evil 8 is going to be when in fact referencing the element of survival horror because Capcom is looking to take the elements of Resident Evil 7, the Resident Evil 2 remake, and other classic Resident Evil survival horror games and including those elements within 8, that is a step in the right direction. However, when it comes down to the overall narrative, what I do believe needs to happen is a lot of people want to see zombies come back and we've seen how amazing zombies were done in the Resident Evil 2 remake and I would really love to see a different type of zombie be introduced in Resident Evil 8, perhaps maybe evolving them to some extent to where they become more aggressive or maybe even combining their DNA with that of the mold creatures and introducing a mold like zombie to where they are very vicious to come across but at the same time doesn't make them invincible by nature to take down when having to come across a herd of them when of course having to venture off on a mission. And this comes from the demand of so many people wanting to see the concept of the actual zombie return in Resident Evil 8 given the status that many people didn't really like nor appreciate the mold creatures in Resident Evil 7 and if you were one of those that really didn't mind the mold creatures in Resident Evil 7 then fair game to you but Resident Evil 8 needs to introduce a similar concept where we get to understand where the mold came from and of course its usage in a situation to where it could affect plants, it could affect animals, it could affect people and what it necessarily does to change someone I think is a step in the right direction but one of the biggest gripes for Resident Evil 7 was the concept of first person mode having to be adapted and the fact that if you guys would like to see third person mode let me know in the comment section below or if you guys don't necessarily mind having to be in first person mode then again I want to get your thoughts on the camera angles within the game because a lot of people solely were turned off by Resident Evil 7 only due to its camera angle alone and although first person camera angles aren't objectively bad when it comes to specific games what made Resident Evil so special was in fact the camera angles and the camera cuts particularly when looking at what the Resident Evil 2 remake did by having the over the shoulder camera angle and the fact that a lot of people seem to have enjoyed this a lot more than having to battle and engage themselves in the game itself by having a first person kind of point of view. Resident Evil 8's make or break moment is really going to depend on a few things. Number one, its storyline and narrative going forward. Number two, its characters and presentation along with its atmosphere. And number three, its camera angles. Because if the game has two out of the three check marks and fulfills the needs in giving the players exactly what they look for in those aspects other than the actual camera angles themselves, then fans within the Resident Evil community are still going to label the game in being bad just for the sole reason of its camera angles not being utilized in the game properly. So I believe that there needs to be an option to where we can switch off from third person to first person and vice versa rather than having the game be incorporated only through one point of view. Is it then that I only believe that in order to satisfy the individual playing the game, do I believe by incorporating the option to switch from first person to third person do I think is going to be the right step in the right approach in giving us an objectively good game that allows people that do prefer first person to stick with first person or if you prefer third person to stick in third person. But in the end, I want to get your thoughts in the comment section below. It would appear that Resident Evil 8 is going to be following the footprints and the blueprints of what Resident Evil 7 did and is only going to be set up as the beginning of something more to come. So do you guys expect to have Resident Evil 8 be possibly one of the absolute best games in the series? Or are you guys lacking hope in Capcom in delivering that aspect and giving us everything we've been asking for thus far in a Resident Evil game in delivering when it comes down to camera angles, story, character introductions, and many other things? Thank you all so much for watching, guys. Once more, if of course you guys are stoked, ready, and excited for Resident Evil 8, and hell, even the Resident Evil 3 remake, then be sure to slap this video up with a big thumbs up by clicking that like button down below. Also, if you guys enjoyed this video and cannot wait for more Resident Evil content, content and gaming discussions, then be sure to go on ahead and smash that subscribe button down below and turn on all notifications to never miss a single upload. Tune back in for the next video and I'll be seeing you all down in the comment section below. Have a great day everybody. Peace.